What's the word, y'all? Man, we got two recap episodes back to back. It's going back to old times. We haven't got this in months. And we're here. Um, I didn't expect to do this video today, but you know, there's a lot to talk about. And yes, I'm rocking a different colored fit into today's video. And we will continue to bring out the rainbow fittings until my hair appointment is done. Because right now, under the, I mean, you can kind of tell from it sticking out. It's bad. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, man. We have 400,000 subscribers on this channel, which is insane for a channel that's just kind of hit record and talk. Um, things are transitioning a little bit, and we've talked about that, and I'll talk about it again at the end of the video. But thank you for 400,000. Let's talk about the hottest team in basketball right now because they got another win tonight. And, of course, we we're talking about the L.A. Clippers. Oh, Knicks fans, I'm sorry. I had to do it. Yes, y'all have the hottest active streak in the NBA, and we will talk about y'all a little bit later. But the hottest team in the NBA since the All-Star break has been the Clippers. And I had a, a, a tweet from StatMuse. Shout out to them. They are 17-5 and five since the All-Star break. Number one in win percentage, number one in offensive rating, number one in three-point percentage, and a lot of other stats that show the eye test um, is true and saying the Clippers are good. We knew that, right? The Clippers are good. But nobody really cares. Clippers blew a 3-1 in the playoffs last year, so who cares about what they're doing in the regular season, right? On this channel, I've been preaching over and over to y'all to enjoy basketball for what it is, and right now the Clippers are hot. And Paul George is having one of those seasons, again, where at the beginning of this year he started off as great as anybody in the league, as great as anybody in the league. He hurt his toe. And then he started being bad. And then that's when uh, way off P, a pandemic P, all of those things start trending again because they're on national TV and he has another bomb game. But he was very open about his injury and he could barely move. His toe was kicking his ass. He was trying to thug through it and try to play these games, but he was hurting himself. He was hurting his statistics. He was hurting his team. But it seems like that, that toe was healed up. They are 9-1 and one in their last 10, and he's averaging like 30 points per game in that streak. And games where Kawhi isn't there, he is putting his team on his back and hitting big-time shots and doing things like that. I know today's game didn't end the way us NBA fans wanted it to end. Paul George drives and try to kick it out. He's fouled. They're already in a bonus. He hits two free throws because it's Paul George, and the game is over. I know it happened time and time again, but what we have learned from the NBA, they don't really care about the viewing experience because if they cared about the viewing experience, the end of the Nets versus Pelicans game wouldn't have take, taken 20 minutes. So they rally get the right call, and Paul George getting fouled probably was the right call, and they end up getting their win because he hits these free throws. The NBA has lucked out in some sense, though. I just realized there's stuff on this mic. Oh, my God. The NBA has lucked out to some extent because we keep having these games on national TV that is banger. Steph Curry dropping almost 50 but we're missing Ben Simmons and we're missing Tobias Harris. Today, Paul George goes in the duel with C.J. McCollum and Norman Powell. But we're missing Damian Lillard and Kawhi Leonard. Now, the casual fan may not be tuning in because he sees that Dame and Kawhi is not there. But if they did tune in, they got a good product. So the NBA is lucky now, man, because these games could easily be super boring, yawn fest. But they're turning out to be solid. Um, back to the Clippers. Back, back to the things that they're doing. They are on a hot streak, and they are continually showing us that this is a team that should be um, on that top tier of teams when it comes to 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 being good teams. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody wants to bring up what happened in the playoffs, and I understand it. You you want to see them do it when it matters the most. But again, we try to stay in the present in this channel, and in the present, the Clippers have been really good. I keep getting asked, Kenny, what do you think about Terrence Mann? What do you think about Terrence Mann? Terrence Mann is going to be a really good NBA player. You know what I'm saying? He, he does this thing in these games where a pretty good defender. He's not afraid to take the shot. We've talked about this on the show before, if I'm not mistaken. I love players that at the end of the quarter won't fake shoot it. They'll actually shoot the ball because they don't care about their percentages. And Terrence Mann will shoot that pill from three-quarters court because he don't really care about his percentages because at the end of the day, if he makes that three-quarter court heave, that could significantly impact the game. He does a great job of getting to the basket at his size because he's a he's a he's basically a point guard, but he's also a bigger point guard. I like Terrence Mann a lot. I like him a lot. I think he fits his team a bunch. Um, Rondo coming into the team has been pretty solid for them. Boogie got some burn today, and he got, I think it's his first double-digit game, a part of this team in 13 minutes. This team is solid, man. This team is fun to watch. Actually, on my main channel, I'm in the process of recording a video of me ranking teams when it comes to how fun they are, not based on how good they are, but how much, how enjoyable they are to watch. The Clippers have been better. Earlier in the season, even when they were really good before they went through that little skid of Paul George and his toe, it was questionable how fun they were, even with the two-star players of Paul George and Kawhi. And I think those are, are probably changed a little bit because I am a fan of Rondo. It's because I like Boogie. You know what I'm saying? They, they've added players to the team that are, are more, more fun for me personally to watch. And they get another win. They are 41-19. and 19. There are so many teams in the league right now, specifically in that Western Conference with the Clippers, the Suns, and the Jazz. They're having, like, ridiculously great years. 40 and 19, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're 21 games over 500. 
21 games over 500, so shout out to them. Um, big win for them. Let's move on to the other hottest team in the NBA, the New York Knicks. Um, a lot of Knicks fans, every single day I do a video. They're like, man, please talk about us. And I gave the Knicks a full 15-minute video about a month ago, breaking down uh, their keys to success and why they have been better this season. And nothing of that has changed. You know what I'm saying? Julius Randle has blossomed into stardom. He is most improved player. Uh, Tom Thibodeau is in a coach of the year uh, conversations. I, I was having this conversation with the homies, trying to figure out if, if it's him and Monty Williams. And, and a good point that my friends brought up is Chris Paul gets a lot of the Monty Williams praise, just like how Chris Paul got a lot of uh, the Billy Donovan praise from last season. He just comes in and changes the culture. He comes in and, and elevates a team. Nothing like that happened for the Knicks. On paper, they were the same exact team this year they were last year, but they were terrible last year, but this year they're good. So Tom Thibodeau gets a lot of that love. Julius Randle gets a lot of that love. And my favorite storyline from the New York Knicks is R.J. Barrett. Um, R.J. Barrett has been snubbed off a list here and there. We've talked about that here again. Snubbed off a list. Um, playing in a big market team, you would expect him to get a lot more buzz, a lot more love on social media and stuff, but he don't. But it's okay to be in the shadows, especially when your team is successful. Would you rather have RJ in the top 25, under 25, but the team be ass, or him be kind of snuffed from that list and the team be a playoff team? I will take the latter. I will take being a playoff team. Today's game is very interesting because in the first half, first of all, these teams couldn't miss um, except for RJ. RJ started off really struggling. Then in the second half, he turned it up completely, and that has been the story for a lot of RJ games. It feels like in the first half, he just don't shoot the ball very well, and then I don't know if it's a Tom Thibodeau pep talk or whatever it is, he comes out in the second half and he performs very, very well. Um, he's already hit big-time shots for the Knicks when we were on hiatus of the show. He had like back-to-back -back games of hitting game winners or game ceiling three-pointers, and then the other day on national TV, my boy D. Rose was having a big-time moment, um, passing out to Reggie Bullock a couple buckets before that getting the block on Eric Bledsoe against the Pelicans I mean I didn't do a recap that day but that was a super fun game to watch and going back to my my rankings of most fun teams to watch the Knicks are in the upper echelon if you love defense this is one of those teams to watch man they're they're as defensive minded as ever and that is crazy to say that about a Julius Randle led team because for his entire career leading up to this point he had not been a positive defensive player and this year he really is. New Orleans Noel gets a lot of love, man. Mitchell Robson goes down with an injury, and you can't really tell because New Orleans Noel is there. You know what I'm saying? This is the New Orleans Noel, and I know offensively he don't provide much. You know what I'm saying? But the defensive impact that New Orleans Noel is giving the New York Knicks is basically what he was drafted for all those years ago in the lottery, and he's showcasing that in New York, and, and it's great. It's great. Reggie Bullock don't do a damn thing but hit threes, and that's all you really need him to do. You know what I'm saying? For a team that struggles to shoot the three-point ball, uh, Reggie Bullock has been a very, very bright spot for them, so a big win for them. Um, these are two of my favorite teams to watch going at it when it comes to the Hornets and then the Knicks. And then, of course, LaMelo Ball coming back very, very soon should be super fun. Next game we have is the Atlanta Hawks versus the Magic. I've been watching a lot of Magic games, at least some of Magic games, because they're the first team to play typically every day if it's like a home game because they're on the East Coast. And I've been loving what I've seen from Wendell Carter. Um, and this is this – is, why I love it so much because some players need a change of scenery, need a new coaching staff, need a new development staff to to grow their wings. And, and what we are seeing probably from the Chicago Bulls camp is they struggle a bit developing talent. And Wendell Carter, I'm hoping that he gets to Orlando and he hits that fullest potential. He knows this, but I'm always rooting for him no matter if he's playing in Orlando, Chicago, Boston, wherever he goes on his journey, he has a fan in me. So to see him start off this game, hit a three, hit a mid-range jump shot, then run the break and dunk the ball all within like three minutes, I was in love. I'm like, this is the Wendell Carter we thought we were getting in Chicago. And yeah, it took a few years in a new destination to get there. I'm super happy he is what he is doing here. And there's no chains on him. There's no restrictions on him. He's He's... The better big on the roster right now between him and Mobamba, who were drafted, <laughs> drafted back to back. Um, he's the better sitter on the roster, so he has no leash. He can do what he he wants out there. He's already attempted more threes in Orlando than he did in Chicago, and maybe that is Steve Clifford just saying like, "Bro, you're unleashed. Do what the hell you want. We don't really care. We we just want you to become who you think you can be, which is great." But uh, that's too much time in Orlando and not enough time on the Atlanta Hawks because they are also a super hot team. After starting off, I think it was 14 and 20 is what I saw on Twitter. Um, they have surprised the world and jumped up to one of the top five seeds in the league. And tomorrow we have Atlanta versus New York, and it's the battle for the fourth seed, and it should be a banger. Trey Young comes out in these glasses, these goggles, and I'm like, bro, that is fire. That is fire. They were like, I don't even know how to describe it. They were like kind of tenant. They weren't just like, glasses or normal goggles or like a face mask is clear they felt tinted to me 
You know what I'm saying? And he he out he went out there and balled. But the real story from the run from the Atlanta Hawks, at least in my opinion, has to be Clint Capella because we knew that Clint Capella was a good basketball player. Obviously, he was a part of these um, the Houston Rockets teams. He got paid because he was really solid on the pick and roll with James Harden and this and that. But he has even elevated himself from there offensively and defensively, which is just amazing. Um, I kind of forget that he's super young. He may not look it. He's in the, the school of Kevon Looney of looking older than what he is, but he's still relatively young. And that was a pretty solid trade for the Atlanta Hawks to pick up him because he fits perfectly with Trey Young. And we finally get to see that because if you remember when they traded for him, they didn't get to see him play with Trey Young for what, like a season or at least that's what it felt like. And now he's finally there. He's fully healthy. Him and Trey Young have been really, really solid together. So the Atlanta Hawks, man, living up to potential. Shout out to Nate McMillan. We all knew that Nate McMillan was a good coach um, and he is a he is a floor raising coach. There's usually a ceiling on the Nate McMillan coach, uh, Nate McMillan team. But when it comes to floors, Nate McMillan raises that. Um, the Nets versus the Pelicans game is not a, a game that I watch enough about to feel comfortable talking about it, um, except for the last couple minutes, which felt like an eternity. I see that Zion had an amazing game, 33. I, I did see him turn the ball over with, with, um, with that boy Kyrie in those pockets, 32-point game from Kyrie. He missed a free throw, unfortunately. And that's pretty much it for me. I did watch the end of Timberwolves versus Kings. The Kings are the most confusing team in basketball because they'll go on a six-game win streak, then wrap that up with a 10-game losing streak. It's just it's just so weird. This is a game where for three quarters, for three quarters, both of these teams couldn't miss. We're talking about two teams that don't play any defense. And then when it comes to the fourth quarter, the last, what, six minutes, they could not score whatsoever. Did Minnesota put the clamps on, or did they just stop being able to shoot the basketball? Maybe a little bit of both. Um, fourth quarter, DeAnthony Melton, I'm mean, not DeAnthony Melton, oh my God. Fourth quarter, Anthony Edwards is one of the most fun things to watch in the NBA. He continues to do that. And the Minnesota Timberwolves have been competent over the past month or so. Not great, but competent. Four and six in their last 10. And now we have to have a conversation of for the Timberwolves fans. Do you want this? Because y'all know that pick is top three protected. They go to number four, the, the Warriors are dancing in the rain. So I don't know. Of course you want to see your team show glimpses but as of right now they're the second worst team in the nba so they'll they'll be tied for the the best odds to keep that pick but the way they're playing right now the magic will probably be lower than them when it's all said and done the way they're playing right now the cavaliers might be lower than them when it's all said and done would you rather keep that pick or win six more games i don't really know all right that's all I really have. I want to talk about way more, but we're already at the 12-minute mark, so we'll save that for another day. Just know that that NBA TV, those talking heads, have brainwashed a lot of y'all to thinking about what's what's important in the NBA world, and it's not what's really important in the NBA world. That's all I'm going to say. We'll talk about that in a future episode. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all soon. Call game.